We're gonna go ahead and go over an overview of the organ systems of the body from exercise two from the lab manual. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from table 2.1. I'm gonna go over the organs that you should know from the different organ systems from the different models that we have, okay? So, um, the first organ system listed on table 2.1 is the integumentary system. The only organ that we can see here really is the skin. And there I just put a sticker on the outside. And a lot of times students will come and say, uh, Mrs. Campbell, the sticker fell off. And I'll say, no, it hasn't. Um, it is simply on the outside. Um, the synonym for the skin is the integument. So you can actually get extra credit. So that would be the skin, okay? Um, the skeletal system. The skeletal system, we have the bones, okay? So any of the bones that you can see here, teeth are not bones, okay? So you have bones, all right? Anything that is in this kind of whiter color is actually a cartilage. So you have these cartilages or these cartilages, okay? Those are going to be part of the um, uh, skeletal system as well. Tendons, ligaments, and joints will leave for other labs uh, when we do the skeletal system as well. Muscular system, so the muscles that you'll see are going to be, for example, these reds are gonna be the nice skeletal muscles that you can see um, on that model. On this model, they're also in red as well. Most of them have been cut through. The typical model that, uh, the muscle that you will be tested on, the only one that you need to know the name of so far is going to be the diaphragm, okay, which is that muscle right there that is going to separate then the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. So on this model, that is the diaphragm. On this model, that is the diaphragm, okay? For the nervous system, for the nervous system, we're going to see the brain, okay? The brain, you can see clearly on this model there, okay? On the other model, you can see the brain, sorry, I'm gonna move it over here, okay? You can see the brain on the back, then if we pull this out, okay? You can see here in the middle, yes, the spinal cord and these yellow lines that are coming out here, these are the spinal nerves additional nerves that you can see as well throughout the body. No, these are the only nerves that I see. So those are part of the nervous system. Well, we'll leave that there that it fell out. <laughs> yes, those are the nerves that I see. Okay, brain and spinal cord. The nerves and sensory receptors then along the skin, we'll see those when we see um, skin for the sensory receptors. The endocrine system. The endocrine system, the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland, if on this model we take out the brain, okay? I will show you now that I'm at it. All the organs are gonna fall out, but if we tilt this forward, okay? We can see, woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh, thank you, and all the organs did fall out. That little P-shaped, okay, organ right there. That is going to be the pituitary gland deep inside the brain. Did you get that one? No. That little peach colored shape that's in the center there. You got that one. Okay, let's make sure this doesn't fall. It's heavy. Got it? That's the pituitary gland, okay? Neither one of the models have a thymus because they're both adults, but the thymus would be sitting right here in that central mediastinum, okay? The thyroid, okay? Thyroid gland sitting right there. The parathyroid, the parathyroid is on the dorsal portion, so neither one of the models can this one take out the thyroid gland? No. So those will be four to six little buttons that are on the posterior surface in the back of that thyroid gland, okay? The adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are gonna be sitting on top of the kidneys, okay? Adrenal glands, those two right there. 
The pineal gland, um, that's gonna be in the brain as well. We cannot see that one. We cannot see the ovaries and the testes because neither model is, um, has sex organs. And the pancreas, okay? All of this then is the pancreas. Those are the endocrine glands that we can see on the models. The cardiovascular system, the heart, okay? And the blood vessels. The majority of the blood vessels that you see in blue are going to be the blue are going to be the majority of them are going to be veins okay the majority of the blood vessels in red are going to be arteries not all of them okay lymphatics for the lymphatic system okay the lymphatic vessels are going to be then these lines that you can see coming off of here these are lymphatic vessels obviously the blue are veins the red is artery but these white ones that you can see here are lymphatic vessels these are lymph nodes. The spleen is this organ right there, okay? And the thymus, again, would have been sitting right there. Those are the major lymphatic organs. The respiratory organs, the nasal cavity, okay? So within the nasal cavity, okay, we're gonna have the nasal cavity. The pharynx, Okay, I can't see the pharynx on that model. The pharynx is more commonly known as the throat. There's different portions of the pharynx, okay? But the pharynx is going to be, okay, this portion back here, okay? The larynx, okay? The larynx is also known as the voice box, is this structure right there. The trachea, okay? See the clear rings of the trachea, okay? The trachea then comes down and branches, okay? Any of these branches then are going to be the bronchi in plural. A single one is called a bronchus. And then you're going to have the left and the right lung. Those are the major respiratory organs. The digestive organs. The digestive organs, you're gonna have the oral cavity, okay, so the mouth, okay. All of this part here is your oral cavity. My apologies, oral cavity. I'm sideways, I can't see that very well. I think I'm pointing at it, right? Yes, mm -hmm. oral cavity, okay. Again, the pharynx, okay, that's shared by both the respiratory and the digestive. The esophagus, okay, the esophagus. The stomach, okay? The small intestine, okay? The large intestine. Accessory structures that include the teeth, the salivary glands, okay? The salivary glands. I don't see any on this model. On this model I do, okay? That's a salivary gland. That's a salivary gland, okay? Under there, those are salivary glands. The liver. Okay. The pancreas. The pancreas then is gonna be shared by both the digestive and the endocrine. The urinary system. The urinary system then is going to have the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and I don't see the urethra on this model. I only see the opening to the urethra there. Let's see on the other model I do. All right, let me get that for you. So here I've got the bladder on the other model, okay? Urethra. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Thank you. 
That is the urinary system, okay? So the reproductive then, we don't have any. There are some things that um, we haven't labeled that you do, I do expect you to know, okay? So this part of the, there are parts of the peritoneum, which is the lining of um, the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity then, the small intestine is very what we call convoluted in anatomy, meaning that to increase surface area, it's very folded. But like the hose, when it's folded, you don't want it to kink because then things can't pass through. So you have to make sure that it's folded, but not kinked. So there's a lot of different things that have to be so I don't know if you ever noticed when somebody has an uh, abdominal surgery, the doctor will come in and say, have you had a bowel movement? Have you passed gas? And you're like, what's it to you? That is to make sure that a kink hasn't formed. Because as soon as they open, all of these membranes have been fiddled with and they wanna make sure that things haven't. So this part of the peritoneum that forms like an apron in the front, and I love it because your textbook calls it a lacy membrane. It is neither lacy nor nice looking. It's full of adipose tissue, it is full of blood vessels. This is called the greater omentum and it hangs like an apron in the front. So this one in the front is the greater omentum. And all of these white membranes that are really responsible for making sure that there are no kinks formed here, that those are called the mesenteries. And those have blood vessels and lymphatics and a lot of different things. So that was one thing that we didn't mention. So mesenteries, all these white membranes, greater omentum. The large intestine also has a synonym called the colon, and there's different parts to it. The first part of the large intestine has this widening, which is actually an evolutionary remnant called the cecum. So it's this widened sac right here. This is called the cecum. Coming off of the cecum, also an evolutionary remnant, is the appendix vermiform. Forms like a little worm. That's why it gets that name. The large intestine frames the abdominal cavity, so it forms the cecum. Ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, all of this is extra credit, so just so that you know. Forms an S-like sigmoid colon, and then the rectum. But the rectum is there, so that is an extra credit. On the other model, you have a better cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. <gasps> oh man, coming in. Sigmoid colon, rectum, anus. Okay, last opening. Um, also parts of the heart are you're expected to know as well, okay? Some parts of the heart that you need to know, wrong heart, okay? Um, when blood returns to the heart, it comes back via the inferior vena cava, and if you know the inferior, I don't know why the lab manual doesn't have the superior vena cava as well. And that's good to help you understand inferior and superior words, okay? Um, the blood coming out of the heart is gonna come out the ascending aorta, aortic arch. So these branches come off of the aortic arch, descending aorta. Were there any other words that you guys remember that, um, I think we covered everything, right? I think so. Okay, we're good. I'll post that.